I guess I got my swagger back. What If Alt Hist is a YouTube channel owned and operated by Rudyard Lynch. For the past few years, he's made videos giving his own treatment to topics in history, anthropology, and geopolitics. Rudyard's shtick is to explain the world through his favorite philosophies and through his own intuition. A bookish right-wing worldview, drawing on authors who all wrote very consciously as Western men. With that said, his videos all hit the beats you'd expect them to. A capital L left is responsible for most of the world's issues, and decadence is swallowing our civilization in real time. Civil wars are imminent, economic crises are inevitable, and girlfriends are low supply, high demand goods. This is the essence of what if all hissed. It's depressive, it's anxious, and some people are really into it. Rudyard has more than half a million subscribers right now, and his numbers are still climbing. Judging by the comments, Lynch's assessment of the West resonates with a lot of people, and he's voicing concerns which many viewers share. Part of the reason why is because Lynch's latest offerings are not history videos, despite the channel name. His content still includes facts, maps, and figures, but Rudyard himself is delivering sermons. These stream-of-consciousness rants about the state of the world and why he hates it. Most people are tuning in more for the emotion than for the educational aspect of these videos. Rudyard's emotional energy is often criticized by his co-YouTubers. The big criticism is that Rudyard's videos are too vibey and non-specific to be of any value. On the contrary, Rudyard believes that his videos are well organized, and recently he's put out his manifesto for the new right, which is supposed to detail his most important positions on culture culture, social structure, and religion. In practice, this video was just as useful as all of Rudyard's other videos, and it left me with more questions than answers. Particularly, I was left wondering exactly what Rudyard believes about religion. It's a topic which frequently appears in Rudyard's rants. He emphasizes the role of religion in shaping culture as much as anybody on the right may be expected to. But even so, it's an element of Rudyard's thought which critics often ignore. Likewise, Rudyard's own man Manifesto leaves us in the dark regarding his religious opinions and tendencies, but today we're going to fix that. This video is a rundown of Rudyard Lynch's religious beliefs, sourced from him and curated by me. So let's start. Naturally, we can begin with Rudyard's upbringing and the religion practiced in his home life. Rudyard was born to Christian Quaker parents in rural Pennsylvania, the son of an oat heiress and a samurai father. In Rudyard's own words, the Quaker emphasis on mysticism and a close knowledge of God is a profound influence to him. He's gone so far as to say that Quakerism is the religious identity which he feels closest to. He's also said that Quakerism is cucked, but but I won't judge. This identity is important to understand because mysticism, first learned by Rudyard from the Quakers, is going to be influential on all of his positions going forward. Mysticism, the personal pursuit of union and intimacy with God, the compulsion to do it yourself, also explains Rudyard's checkered relationship with the church. He doesn't want to attend church, he doesn't want to date in the congregation, and he disparages people who do like going to church. Rudyard gives his reasons why in the CIA Spirit World video. The second dream of the town on the verge of heaven is symbolic for the church in the mid-20th century. Most Christians weren't religious in the way they were before and didn't really believe in God. Thus, the church became about itself, effectively turning into a social club and not really believing in God. To summarize, Rudyard isn't interested in churchism or the role the church plays as a social apparatus because he prefers a mystical approach, which circumvents the formalities of church structure and socializing. All of this checks out with what we already know about Rudyard, but he still says some weird shit in this clip regardless. Like, when he says that most churchgoers in the 20th century didn't believe in God. Like, how would he know that? I mean, this was a century where US states were banning evolution from school curriculums. There were definitely some old time believers around in the 1900s. Even though Rudyard contends with the church, his mystical streak and his quirky Big Five openness have warmed him to a number of belief systems. Rudyard says that he respects all the major religions. And if we ignore his obvious borrowings from Islam, we can explore his other pivotal influences. The so-called called Indic religions, those being Buddhism and Hinduism, 
and Platonism. We'll start with the Indic religions, because Rudyard usually fucks those up the hardest. To be fair, people often do. Western scholarship has always struggled to contextualize Buddhism and the Vedic religion. Historical writings from the early years of Buddhism are almost non-existent, and following the development of the Vedas has basically been a 200-year word search. There is still an air of mystery obscuring much of India's early history, an air which, according to John Key, has only begun to be cleared by advancements in archaeology. This makes Indian history a topic where, generally, the newer the information is, the better it is. And because of this, Rudyard's notorious preference for old books is a big issue. Orientalism is a term which, in normal parlance, describes an attitude towards Asia which plays up and emphasizes the exotic quality and otherness of the East. Orientalists like the East because it's weird and novel to the surveyor. It's all about getting lost in the myth, and sometimes that can be fun, but the presumptions of Orientalism simply don't jive with serious cultural studies. However, in the 19th and 20th centuries, many academics were totally in love with this attitude. Take for example Amaury de Reincourt, who is Rudyard's favorite historical writer according to one tweet. Rudyard himself calls de Reincourt an Orientalist and admires the Man of Action Explorer vibe which de Reincourt portrayed through his expeditions. An example being his study in Tibet. Now I think that undertaking was definitely interesting, but I also think it embodies Orientalism in its most pejorative sense, with de Reincourt writing in a way that's totally fantastic and literary. The most interesting idea that Rudyard borrows from de Reincourt is this dichotomy the author describes between Vedic ontology and modern physics, implying that one accurately showed the reality behind our universe thousands of years before the other. This is an idea which Rudyard's been repeating a lot recently, using it as a way to underrate recent science and the condition of modernity, and oversell the merit of Eastern wisdom. This is Orientalism at its most blatant, and it's perfectly congruent with Rudyard's known hatred of modernity. Rudyard wants Indian religion to be a magic weapon in his battle against Western rationality. The irony, of course, is that he only absorbs India through the fancy of Europeans, who were just as motivated in their approaches as he is. It's completely fucking retarded. But still, we have to move on and cover the last big influence on Rudyard's faith. Once or twice, Rudyard has cited Plato, the wrestler, as an influence on his religious ideas in some capacity. It's hard to say what exactly that influence is because Rudyard mentions Plato and Platonism very rarely. A quick rundown of Plato's central ideas could be useful in this case to understand what Rudyard means. Some of the most important concepts that Plato communicated were that an objective idea of good really existed outside the time and space of creation, that good was the noblest idea in the divine realm, and that striving towards good was possible through philosophy or the love of wisdom. Through the centuries, these concepts were subtly adapted and innovated by Plato's advocates. Plotinus, a much later philosopher, thought that the idea of good was identical to reality's chief god, which he called the One, and positioned good even further from the material plane than it had been in Plato's system. Even though Plato's philosophy was clearly being evolved here, Plotinus, for his part, said that his notion was true to Plato's original vision. Many authors who adapted Plato said similar things, and most readers took their word for it. Today we divide these different philosophies into different movements, Middle Platonist or Neoplatonist, but to ancients like Augustine of Hippo, he was simply reading the works of Platonists, plain and simple. So now I'll ask the question, is Rudyard influenced by Plato or is he influenced by the Platonists? Is he influenced by Plato or is he influenced by Plotinus or Proclus or Plutarch? 
Honestly, I'm not sure Rudyard would even know the answer if you asked him. But regardless, there are ideas common to all schools of Platonism that we should consider along with Rudyard's Christian background. Historically, Christian thinkers have always been vexed by the Platonist cosmic model where God is far and away from material reality. Plotinus said straight up that the one couldn't be fully known to a rational mind. This sharply contrasts the God of the Old Testament and God the Father in Christianity, who was always yapping to his servants. In the early ADs, the Gnostic Christians, adopting an emanating cosmos from the Platonists, tried to work around these differences in a number of creative ways before the whole Gnostic thing collapsed under its own weight. I know that Rudyard doesn't like the Gnostics because I've seen him compare them to the left, so I guess that's solved. But there's still one more point that he needs to answer for. The Platonists all maintained that pursuing the ideal of good was possible through philosophy. So in theory, anybody with the means could work towards this divine end all on their own. This notion is directly opposed to the concepts of salvation and redemption common to most Christian faiths, which stress the necessity of Christ as the mediator between our realm and heaven. So what does Rudyard think of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? What is his big principal takeaway from the Christian faith? I think we should return to the authentic message of the Gospels. Whenever I look at Jesus' teachings, I see something of stunning beauty. The idea that the world is a place of love is the most profound thing imaginable. It's so simple on its face, farcically so, but it is. Why can't we all just get along? Now, I don't want people to think I'm giving Rudyard shit for not having his religious convictions settled. He's 23 years old. I don't really expect him to know exactly what he believes, politically or religiously. All I'm trying to say is that Rudyard is a fucking novice, and he's definitely not fit to be writing manifestos right now. I also want fans of Rudyard to fully appreciate how bizarre some of his fundamentals are. A lot of viewers like Rudyard because he hates the left, but but even so, he's not an average Joe, and he doesn't represent the average Christian in his audience. He's definitely not conservative in his approach to religion, and his beliefs are only becoming more unhinged and arcane with time. He should really just unplug and hike his ass down the Appalachian Trail until he finds some inner peace. Anyways, that's all I have for today. See you next time for the next hit piece.